Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I want to talk to you about the concept of mildly autistic and how it is still autistic. But before I get into this video, I did want to address the current things going on in the world today and the situation with George Floyd and um, people like Breonna Taylor. I don't have words. Obviously what has happened is awful and evil and I just want to encourage those of you who are scared right now that I stand with you, we stand with you, and black lives do matter. I encourage you to go ahead and check out the link in the description to sign a petition regarding justice for Breonna Taylor. Today's topic is actually one suggested by one of my patrons. I really appreciate you talking to me about this and I did have a lot of trouble with how to to say this and how to really talk about this topic because a lot of people are very sensitive regarding functioning labels and stuff like that. But I feel like if we can kind of put aside the politically correct language today and just talk about this issue and if we can like listen to each other, that'd be fantastic. Now, if you've seen my video on the criteria for an ASD diagnosis in the DSM-5, you probably noticed that there were plenty of criteria and kind of things that you had to follow to be able to place someone on the spectrum as a professional in that field. You may also know that according to the DSM-5, which is the most recent authority in the United States regarding psychological and psychiatric kind of diagnoses, Asperger's is now considered considered a part of the autism spectrum. Many debate about whether Asperger's should have been placed on the autism spectrum as part of autism spectrum disorder or not. However, regardless of people's feelings, it is the same kind of pathology, perhaps a mild version of autism, even though obviously a lot of people would not prefer that kind of language use. Even when it was separate as Asperger's in the United States, many publications described Asperger's as mild autism. We've spoken on the concept of everyone being on the spectrum and how that euphemism is often used to try to relate and be helpful and it's usually just not, and it's just not true. We are all human beings, but we are not all autistic. This distinction is absurdly important in understanding the plight of many autistic people. The ones who seem just fine, who mask well, who communicate pretty well, who people might not immediately look at and think, oh, that person's autistic. Because when these individuals' autistic traits become apparent, it's usually in a negative manner. Sensory overload, overwhelm, meltdowns, shutdowns, elopement, communication, and executive function failures. To the casual observer, it doesn't make sense. How is it that this normal person suddenly started acting like a child? Why are they screaming and hitting themselves? Why are they acting like a caged animal trying to get out of the store. The problem is these questions oftentimes come after the autistic's attempts at remedying the situation have been criticized. Why do you need headphones? That's rude. People want to talk to you. Get over it. Suck it up. It's not even loud in here. What are you doing with your hands? That looks weird. Be quiet. You're so loud and annoying. Don't you have any respect? Look at me. Why are you such an attention seeker? Why are you such a weirdo? Take a break from what? One that hurt from me was when someone who knew, someone who was probably the most understanding out of basically almost all the people in my life, witnessed me becoming overwhelmed, but like, like overstimulated. So my actions seemed as though they were just like hyper and I was getting out of control. I couldn't focus and basically it was like a, a non-negative meltdown, I guess. Like, it wasn't like crying and, and screaming. It was just like, everything was like this. I don't know how to explain it better. And they looked at me and they said, get real. Real? This is real. 
It's in these moments that you begin to see why we are not the same as you. You might see it in the little quirks and think, oh, it's not really that big of a deal. It's probably just some psychobabble some so-called professional person came up with and now they have this label. They're not level three support needs. They're not severely autistic. They don't need an aid 24 seven. They're just fine. They don't need a device to communicate, although a lot of people would find it extremely helpful to have one in the cases that they go into a shutdown or face selective mutism, but you know. Of course, then that's just them being stubborn. They just don't want to speak to you. Most of us know deep down that there is something wrong or different about us. We strive to be like you. We strive to be the functioning members of society that we were always meant to be. It is our privilege of being mildly autistic. It is also our curse. Our efforts are never enough. We cannot change the fact that it is not loud in here to you. There are particular frequencies at particular intervals that are getting inside of our brain and driving us mad. We cannot change the fact that something hurt hours ago and is somehow by the exasperated sigh you emit or the no or the demand that you give, all of a sudden a damn burst that we didn't even know existed until it was too late. We can speak, we can communicate, we do our best to look and act like you. But sometimes we can't say when the world is crumbling. Partially because some of us are unable to tell what's going on until it's extreme, and partially because we know it doesn't make sense. We know it's not rational. We know we shouldn't be bothered. We know we should be you. We, the so-called mildly autistic, high-functioning, low-support-needs, Asperger's, whatever name you want to give to it, exist. We need support. We need understanding. We are not neurotypical. We are not you. The diagnosis is not a label, an excuse, or a lie. It is an expert finding what we have desperately hidden, albeit some of us are more successful than others at hiding it. Our autism isn't just something that showed up in odd little quirks in our childhood and just went away. Our brains literally work differently and that's okay. It's difficult making these videos because I constantly get told how I don't look autistic enough because I can write a script, I can talk to a camera, I can edit, all things that perhaps you think autism means I can't do. It's the same kind of people who say that I'm not autistic enough, who would scoff at my meltdowns, my times of vulnerability, when I am so overwhelmed, when my brain won't function, when everything is just too much and I can't sort out the information that's going on and I can't even understand what's going on with my body or what my mind is thinking and sometimes I can't get my words to come out and if they do, they sound weird and everything is going insane. You would make fun of it. You would tell me that I am fine, that I am just being dramatic. I should get over myself. The thing is, nothing will ever be good enough for you. I'm making this video upon request, and I do think this needs to be said. But the worst part is, I don't know if it's going to matter. Because even if somehow I could take a blood test and show you the results, give you all the documents of my diagnosis information, let you see my meltdowns and my vulnerable moments, none of it would be enough. Because I am not autistic enough. I am not normal enough. I cannot exist because you cannot wrap your mind around the concept of someone not fitting your stereotypes. There is importance in acknowledging all of the spectrum. That there are people who cannot self-advocate. But that does not mean that self-advocates should not be heard either. We have a unique set of struggles in which our needs are not met and we are not given help because our existence, as someone who isn't painfully apparently autistic, yet isn't up to your standards, isn't good enough, is so confounding to the average person that we go through cycles of being great and being just fine to cycles of being absolutely devastated and ruined. We are both in need of help and not good enough. I don't wanna make this video to make anyone feel poorly, autistic or otherwise. I just feel that this frustrating loop 
needs to be exposed and perhaps maybe when we look at this and when we start to try to understand this, maybe we can start to make progress in this particular set of issues, specifically for those you might consider mildly autistic. Someone who is mildly autistic, someone who is considered to have Asperger's, it's a very real thing. The DSM-5, the way that people diagnose, it's not a joke. It's not for fun. It's not for labeling people and just making everybody whatever. There's a very real process, a very real reason that these diagnoses are important and that they do exist and that does affect how we see the world and how we live our lives and how we are perceived by others and when we just need help. Thank you so much for watching. I don't know, I guess I didn't really intend for this to be as dramatic or whatever. If you found this useful in any way, go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I post to this channel every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, so if that interests you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me over on Patreon. And a special thank you to my spaz tier patrons, Brian Kleinhammer and Jesse Graves. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. See me in my next video. Bye.